What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing to my channel. And while you're at it, smash that like button for me. I really would appreciate it. Also, hit that post notification bell so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. Be careful down in the comment section of the videos. A lot of scammers, a lot of spam. I will never ask you to contact me by WhatsApp or Telegram. I also do not invest money for my subscribers. So please be careful. Don't get yourself scammed. If you want up to 15 free stocks, Moomoo is gonna give you up to 15 free stocks when you open a new Moomoo brokerage account. You put $100 in that brokerage account, they're gonna give you five free stocks. You put $1,000 in that brokerage account, they're gonna give you 15 free stocks. There's a link down in the description box of this video. Go click on that Moomoo link. Open up your new Moomoo account today. Go get that free stock. Go get that free money. In today's video, we want to talk about how much do you need in investments to retire on $100,000 per year, right? That means you'll be getting or making $100,000 a year from your investments in your golden years. Now, when we talk about retirement, we, we also need to mention what the average retiree income is on an annual basis here in the United States. And that's $50,000 a year. So if the average income for a retiree in the United States is 50,000, how in the world are you going to get to 100,000? We're going to talk about that. Now, there are also some other ways people try to determine in the future how much money they'll need for retirement. One of those ways is, is what they call the 80% of your pre-retirement income rule. So if I'm making 100K a year, I get ready to retire, the 80% of your pre Retirement income rule states that I need to have my investments or some type of income coming in that equals $80,000, right? Because that's 80% of my $100,000 salary I was making when either I was working for somebody or working in my own business, right? So 80%, <clears throat> which is $80,000 on that $100,000. The second way people look at it is they, they, they take 10 times their salary, right? Same thing. If I'm making $100,000 a year, I say to myself, okay, when I get to retirement age, I need at least a million dollars in my nest egg. That's 10 times my annual salary. And then the other one is <clears throat> what they call the 4% rule. And that works basically this way. You would take 4% of your retire, your, 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 your nest egg, and you do that for 25 years. And that's the 4% rule. And the rule of thumb there is the interest that you're earning on your nest egg is going to be more than the 4% that you're going to use, right, to live. Let's say the interest on your nest egg is 6%. You're only going to live on 4%. So those are the three methods a lot of people will use when they're trying to determine what type of income they will have in retirement. Now, for a lot of retirees right now, Social Security is a big part of their retirement income. Remember, I said $50,000 is the average income for retirees in the United States. And probably about half of that is coming from Social Security, right? <clears throat> so about 25K is coming from Social Security. The other 25K is coming from other sources, whether it be a 
an investment portfolio, whether it be rental property, whether it be other pensions from other jobs or some type of royalty is coming in. But on average, it's about $50,000 per year. Now, for me, though, it really boils down to what type of lifestyle do you want in retirement? That's really what it boils down to. Because if you can think ahead and decide what type of lifestyle you want, then you can put a plan together in order to build your assets, right? To generate enough passive income to pay for that lifestyle. The problem is most people don't do that exercise. That's the reason why 100 million Americans uh, have no retirement savings, right? Because most times people don't sit down and do that exercise of saying to themselves, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm 40 years old. Um, I want to retire at 67 over the next 27 years. What do I need to be investing in order to build my assets to a point where I can pay for my lifestyle? Most people don't do that exercise. And that's why most people find themselves when they get to retirement, they're short. They don't have enough money, right? So a lot of these people retire, but then they got to kind of come out of retirement and, and, and work a part-time job because they need a way to supplement uh, their income because they just didn't plan ahead. They just didn't pr plan properly for retirement. And like I said, 100 million Americans don't have no retirement savings. And, and whether you like it or not, 401ks, retirement accounts are a big part of your retirement. Because most companies in today's environment, they don't even give a pension anymore. Now, back when my, when my grandparents were alive and my mom was alive, they worked jobs. Uh, my mom worked a job for the state for 30 years. She got a pension plus her Social Security. Mm -mm. Most companies don't do that anymore. They offer 401ks, right? So, so really what they do is they, they, they push back on you the retirement thing. They're saying no longer are we going to be responsible for your retirement. We put that back in your lap. Now you can take some of this money that you're earning from us and put it in a 401k and we will match you to a certain percentage and you can save for your retirement that way. So a lot of people um, have taken advantage of that. That's the way I got a lot of my net worth was through a program like that from the banks that I worked for, right? They said, hey, man, get in this 401k program. You put so much in, we'll put so much in for you, and you can save for your retirement. Now, if people didn't do that, then they were just kind of out of luck because most of these companies, like I said, in today's environment, they don't offer any type of pension anymore. Now, you can still work for like the federal government, a lot of times you can work for your state government uh, and they still do pensions, but not normally private companies or public companies. They, they normally don't do that anymore. A lot of them just offer 401ks or some type of savings uh, vehicle that you control. You have to make the decision to put your money in it or not. If you don't put any money in it, then that's on you. So. You, you, you have to really sit down and determine what type of retirement you want. For me, when I was going through that exercise at 26 years old, I was like, okay, let me think in the future here, what type of lifestyle do I want and how much is going to cost me to live that lifestyle? So at 26 years old, I just had that conversation with myself and I said, well, okay, when I get to 50 years old, I want to be able to kick back and do whatever I want to do. So that, that gave me 24 years. And that 24 years, I, I had to earn, take what I earned, keep it, and then multiply it in something, right? But for me, I had to tr kind of figure out how much in assets would I need to generate the amount of money that I wanted. And for me, I said, you know something, when I get to 50 years old, I want my investments to be able to generate $120,000 a year in income, pre-tax income, without Social Security, without pensions, 
I just want my investments to generate $120,000 per year in passive income. So in order to do that, how much money do I need to be socking away in investments over the next 24 years that will put me in a situation where at 50 years old, I can retire because that was the age for me, right? So I started to thinking and I started doing some research and I found um, a, a financial tool that helped me determine how much I needed to build my assets to in order to generate $120,000 a year in passive income from my investments. And that's called the rule of 200. That's the financial tool that I use. It's called the rule of 200. The rule of 200 simply states this, whatever income on a monthly basis you think you're gonna need in retirement, whatever age that is, and I know retirement for some folks is a, a word they don't like, but, but for the lack of a better term, retirement is basically when you no longer have to work for anyone. You no longer have to work in your business. You no longer have to actively do anything to earn income. For most people, that's retirement where they're able to kick back and not have to work and their investments take care of them. That's normally considered retirement. For me, it was 50 years old. For some people, it's 40. For some people, it's 30. For some people, it's in their 20s. It depends on you. Some people, they get to their 70s before they can retire. It depends on you. Now, in my situation at 26 years old, I said, no, 50 years old, I'm done. But I got to get a plan. So I started with the rule of 200. It says, you know, take whatever monthly income you believe you're going to need in retirement and times it by 200. So I said, okay, if I want $120,000 a year in passive income from my investments, I divide that by 12, that gives me what? It gives me $10,000 per month. That's what I needed, right? Now, the rule of 200 says I take that $10,000 dollar amount and I times it by 200, which gives me $2 million. So the rule of 200 says I need at least $2 million in my pot of gold at the end of the rainbow in order to generate pre-tax $120,000 a year. I would take the $2 million, times it by 6%, which is a conservative rate of return, pre-tax rate of return, that would give me $120,000 a year in income. D -d there I go. D -d now I've just did my retirement planning at 26 years old. Now the next step would be what? I gotta get out there and earn. And I gotta put money in something every single year in order to multiply it, to get to my two million. So I use real estate and I use the stock market as my two wealth building tools. And I said at 26 years old, I wasn't making a lot of money. I was making about $30,000 a year Right. I wasn't making a lot of money. And that was back in 1996. So, you know, a ways back. But I was making about thirty thousand dollars a year, which if you look at it in today's dollars, that, that's about fifty thousand dollars a year in today's money. But back then it was 30. So I didn't have a lot of money. I said, well, what I will do is I'm going to take one hundred and fifty dollars every two weeks and I'm going to start putting it in this 401k thing that these people are telling me about at my at the, the bank I work for because they had already told us, ain't gonna be no pension for you. We don't do that no more. You better start putting some money in these 401ks or IRAs or something because we're not gonna be on the hook to pay you anything for retirement. What we're gonna do is if you join this 401k, we're gonna match what you put in up to a percentage of your salary. That's our contribution to your retirement, but you're fully in control of it. If you don't put a dime in, we're not going to put a dime in. That's the model now. So I said, okay, I'm going to start putting this 150 in. I didn't know nothing about the stock market. I just knew 
other people in the bank I was working for were doing it and they were doing it before I started doing it and they were making some money. Their money started growing. So I said, let me, let me jump in there. So that's what I started doing, guys. I started taking that $150 every two weeks, putting it in there at 401k. And then what happened was every time I got a little raise, I would, my 401k contribution would raise. See, that's the concept, guys. Every time we make money, we got to take that money and put it into something to, to grow it, right? That's how, we're, that, that, that's how we got to be programmed in this environment we're in today. I don't care what age you are, because I talk to people in every age bracket, you know, 18 to 25 on up. I talk to people in every age bracket and I tell them the same thing. When they ask me about, hey, how much money do I need for retirement? How much do I need to build my assets to generate enough money for retirement? First thing I ask him is, is how much in retirement on a monthly basis are you going to need? Simple questions. Well, I, I'd like to replace my salary. So if my salary is $100,000 per year, again, pre-retirement, $100,000, and I want to replace that $100,000, right? If I want to replace that $100,000 in retirement with investment income, what did I just say? Rule of 200. So I take my $100,000, I divide it by 12. That gives me about $8,300 a month. I take that $8,300 a month, I times it by 200. That's about $1.6 million. So no matter what age you're at, guys, no matter what dollar amount you want for retirement on a monthly basis, use the rule of 200. And it will put you right where you need to be from a net worth standpoint to generate. So that person who says, I want to have 100,000 coming in in retirement, I just want to, whatever I'm making when I retire, which is 100K pre-retirement, I want to make 100K from my investments in retirement. I want to keep that lifestyle. Then that's how you would determine it, right? You would say, okay, $8,300 times 200. That's about $1.6 million that you would need in your nest egg. At a 6% rate of return, it'll, it'll generate $100,000 a year. So, so as I'm making this 100 k or 50 k or 25 k whatever you make, guys, plug in the numbers. See, it ain't how much income you make, it's how much you keep and multiply. I've told you guys a story of the lady that was a secretary that was making 50 grand a year. Right. And when she passed away, her family came and did like a, you know, just an inventory of all the stuff in her house and looking at all the records. These people didn't even know how much money this lady had. She never told them. She, 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 she passed away and had a seven million dollar stock portfolio. Seven million dollars. She made she never made more than fifty thousand dollars a year, guys. Never. How do you do that? You do that through taking the money that you make, keeping it and multiplying it. See, it ain't about how much you make. It's about how much you keep and multiply. I've worked with people in my banking days that made over a million dollars a year. But yet and still, they were living paycheck to paycheck, had no emergency fund, had no retirement savings. And you ask yourself, how can that be? How can you make over a million dollars a year in active income, but you're living paycheck to paycheck? I'll tell you how. See, they was making a million a year, but they was spending a million too. That's how. They were making a million, but they were spending a million too. And some people say, well, what were these? How can you spend a million too? They spend it. So you got to understand, guys, some folks, the way we're wired is the more money we make, the more stuff we want to go buy. That's just the way it is. Because normally, if I'm making a, a million a year, I'm normally hanging around people that are making similar money or better. So if I'm making a milski and my boss is making three million, I want to keep up with my boss. So if my boss go buy a $300,000 car, I want it too. 
And that's how you get in the trap. You try to keep up with the Joneses. And before you know it, you're living paycheck to paycheck. You got a bunch of stuff. You look nice, but you're dead broke. You look at any income bracket in the United States and you'll find people that fall into that trap. They're trying to keep up with the Joneses. They're living paycheck to paycheck. On the outside, they look great. But on the inside, they look terrible. So what I'm telling you is, in order to get yourself to a point where you're living on $100,000 a year in retirement, you need about $1.6 million in assets. So what kind of assets can you put your money in in order to multiply it that high? Well, you can put it in paper assets. You know, we talk about that a lot on this channel because I did that. Half of my net worth was created through paper assets with that 150 per every two weeks. That's how I started. The other part of my net worth was created through real estate. I would buy these, these, these single family homes in good neighborhoods and I would put tenants in them and I would just hold the property, collect the rent every year, I'm sorry, every month, right? And then I would just hold the property year after year after year because I knew I was buying in neighborhoods where I could get a three to 4% appreciation in value on that property every year. All I had to do was hold it long enough and I would create at least $100,000 worth of equity in that property. And I just kept doing that over, over a 20 year period. I just kept buying those little single family houses every couple of years and kept escalating, escalating, escalating. And before I knew it, I had two asset classes from 26 to 50. Those two asset classes put me in a situation where my net worth was sufficient enough that I could step away from my corporate job and, and generate $120,000 a year in passive income. So, so all I'm telling you guys is you ain't got to be a, 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 a real smart person to do this. I'm not that smart of a person. If I had to take a test today on anything, I probably wouldn't pass it. But I do understand money and I do know how to leverage money and multiply it. That I do know how to do because I did it for a lot of years. And I watched my clients when I was a banker. I watched my clients do it. That's kind of how I learned. I watched them do it. I'm like, golly, this dude ain't that much smarter than me. Matter of fact, he ain't even smarter than me, but he's worth 10 mil. They're worth 20 mil, 30 mil, 40 mil, 100 mil. I had customers that were worth in excess of $100 million, man. And you would never have even known they were worth that. How did they do it? They did it, they did it through three things. Real estate, businesses, stock market. Those are the three things that they put their money in in order to grow their wealth. So guess what I did? I did the same thing. And I grew my wealth to where I needed to grow it to in order to give me freedom. So for you, you got to decide. I don't care what age you are. You have to look at where you want to be in retirement and what type of income you will need in order to have the lifestyle you want. And then you put a plan together to get there. Let's say you're 40 years old and you want to you want to call it retirement at let's say 55. So that gives you 15 years. Let's say at 55, you want to replace your salary that you're currently making at 40 years old. Let's say you're making 75 K a year at 40 years old, but in retirement at 55, you want to have that same 75 K coming in to support your lifestyle. Now in the next 15 years, you got to do some things in order to make that happen. The first thing you got to do is change your way you think about money. Because see, and it, once you get to quote unquote retirement, the goal is I need to be debt free. I need to be debt free. Reduce my expenses every single year from 40 years old to 55. So when I'm 55, I'm debt free. That's number one. That should be your number one goal. I want to be debt free in 15 years because I don't want to go into quote unquote retirement with debt on my back. You shouldn't go into retirement, guys, with debt on your back if you can help it. But you got to plan for it, right? So that's the first thing. You want to think about, okay, over the next 15 years, I got to start cutting back on things. I got to start not having credit card debt. I can't have loans. 
right? I'm okay if someone has a mortgage loan, but that's about it. When you're working towards that retirement, whatever that age is for you, you should be debt free when you get into retirement. That's one of the things I agree with Dave Ramsey on. I agree with Dave, Dave Ramsey that you should be, in, for most people, they should be debt free in full retirement. Now, a lot of people are like, well, Richard, you ain't debt free in full retirement. You got mortgages on your real estate. Well, guys, I'm not retired. I'm actively still earning. I'm actively still working. Now, albeit my own business, but I'm still working. I generate more money now than I, I, I generated when I was working in banking for somebody else. So my income I make now is twice as much as the income I made when I was in banking. At, in my best year in banking. I'm talking about my best year, bonuses, everything. I make more than that now in one year. So I'm still actively earning. So I don't really consider myself retirement. in retirement. I'm financially free. I'm financially free, but I don't consider myself in full retirement. When I do get to full retirement, maybe 15 years from now, maybe at 70, I'll call it quits and I'll be in full retirement. At that point, I'm going to be totally debt free. I won't have no debt to nobody. Right. Because at that point, I'll be transitioning my money out of the stock market and I'll be putting it in something much safer like bonds or laddered CDs or something like that where I get a, a smaller rate of return, but it's guaranteed, right? I no longer need the stock market anymore at that point because I'm, I'm, I'm fully 100% retired. Now, I may keep a small amount of money in the market just to keep up with, with, with inflation so that, you know, so I can really enjoy the golden years. I may do that, fool around with it a little bit, but the bulk of the money won't be in the stock market. It may be in real estate and it'll be in some, some, some type of bonds. So I can get a four or 5% rate of return on the bonds. I'll get a six to seven, eight, 10% rate of return on the real estate. And then I reduce my exposure to equities because I no longer need the growth. I've already got all the growth I need. I can pull my money out of equities and put it in something else because I've already got my growth. For you guys that ain't got no growth yet and you're trying to get growth, the best thing to put your money in to get growth, in my opinion, is equities. Can't really put it in real estate right now unless you have cash to buy real estate because interest rates are so high. Interest rates right now, I looked at it today, 30-year fixed rate mortgage rate is 7.8%, guys. There ain't no way to cash flow on, on, on small real estate purchases. How can you cash flow when you're paying almost 8% of your cash flow is going to service debt? That don't even include your property taxes, your insurance, your repair and maintenance. That's just interest you're paying on the loan. So it's hard to put money in real estate right now if you got to go get a loan for most of the money. If you got cash, I think it's the perfect time to buy real estate because you have all the control because sellers are hurting right now because they don't have anybody to buy their properties because most people have to go get a loan to buy a property. But if you got cash, man, you hold all the cards, right? So, so if you don't have cash, real estate is not your play right now. In my opinion, your play would be paper assets or a business. Those would be the two asset classes I would use if I don't have cash to buy real estate, right? The key though is you have to determine for retirement, quote unquote retirement, you got to determine how much money you need in retirement. And a lot of times people do look at their salary that they're currently making and say, you know something, I'm doing fine on this salary. If I could replicate this salary in retirement and I'm debt free, that's a great retirement. That's a great lifestyle. So why don't you use that as your guideline? That's the reason in the video I said, hey, $100,000. That was the title of this video. $100,000. How can you get to $100,000 a year in retirement income from your investments? That's $8,300 per month, guys. That's $1.6 million in assets that generate hundred k a year, right? That's what you got to get to. How do you do that? Well, you got to take your earned income, your active income, 
and you got to put it in something. You got to put it in something that will give you a 8% rate of return or better. 8% rate of return or better. That's what you got to do. And if you've been following this channel over these last several weeks, I've already walked you guys through exactly what will give you that type of return because that's what I'm investing my money in this year in paper assets. Our retirement guys, or whatever you want to call it, should be full of joy and happiness and, and having fun and, and, and doing the things we really love doing and not have to worry about money. But if we don't prepare for it, We'll spend our whole retirement years worrying about money. Right now is where you should be putting yourself in a position not to worry about money down the road. But you got to plan for it. You got to plan for it. Right? You got to actively earn income because income is your number one tool to build wealth. Now, you can kind of determine how you want to, what type of, you know, what, you know, what method you want to use to determine how much money you need, right? Like I said, some people say, hey, you need 25 times your salary. Some people say you need 10 times your salary. When I say 10 times, 25 times, I'm talking about you need to have, let's say if, if you're making $100,000 a year, if you need 25 times your salary, they, they're, they're saying you need two and a half million dollars in your, in, your, in your nest egg, right? Some people say you need 10 times. So if you're making a you make it 100, you need a million. Some people say you need 80% of your salary. So if you're making 100K, you need $80,000 a year coming in retirement for you to be able to live that same lifestyle. See, the goal is, is when you get to retirement, your, a lot of your expenses should be reduced or eliminated, right? You won't be paying certain... Medic Medicaid, what is it, Medicare and uh, Social Security taxes, right? Because you're retired. You don't have active income. You don't have earned income at that point, right? And then you should, like I said, you should be debt free. If you did it right, you should be debt free, right? Now, there are some things that could go up, right? Health care could go up. But remember, if you get to a certain age in America, you get some help from the government for your, your health insurance, Right? That's why you're paying this. I don't know if it's Medicaid, Medicare, one, one of those terms. You're paying that in. You're paying that as part of your, 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 your payroll taxes, right? So you, you, should, you should have reduced expenses, guys, in retirement. You should. You should not be going into retirement with a bunch of debt. You just didn't plan properly if you are. You just didn't plan properly, Right? So all I'm telling you guys is whatever your income you want in retirement, you can have it, but you got to plan for it. And I gave you that rule of 200. That's a simple way. Now, there are a lot of ways out there. People will, 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 will run you through all types of strategies to get to what? The same thing I'm telling you. How much income do I need at the end of the, the rainbow in order to have the lifestyle I want? How much income do I need? That's the key. How much income do I need on a monthly basis to live my lifestyle? You got to determine that. Now, you got to be realistic. Yeah, I talk to people sometimes and they're just unrealistic. Right? They, oh, I want to have $50,000 a month coming in. I don't, I, do you understand how much $50,000 a month you're going to need to generate in, in, in net worth? Right? Yeah. You, you're going to need about $10 million in net worth. I'm not saying you can't get there, but you're going to need about $10 million in net worth at a 6% rate of return. That's $600,000 a year divided by 12. That's $50,000 a year, uh, $50,000 a month. So you're going to need $10 million in net worth. Hey, go get it. That was a little, that, that, that was way out of the realm of what I was trying to do. I didn't want to stress myself out like that. But for some people, they do that. They got the skill set and they do it, right? But for others, just let's be realistic. Replace your salary, right? If you're happy with the salary that you're making, your goal should be, I want to build my assets high enough that I can replace my salary that I'm getting paid to work for somebody. If I can get my assets to replace that salary, that's a good retirement income for me. Like I said, if I'm making $80,000 a year, 
I want my assets to make $80,000 a year to replace that active income. I want it to be replaced by passive income, but you got to plan for it. Like I said, that's the key. It's all about planning, guys. It's all about saying, okay, what's my target date? What's my target amount? And what's my target net worth? My target date is when I want to quote unquote retire. And again, guys, retirement can be any age. That's up to you. I did it at 50. But you can do it at 40, 30, 20. It's up to you. It's up to you. There is no, oh, I got to wait till I'm 65. No, you don't. You don't even have to wait to 50 like I did. You can retire anytime you want to, but you better have some income and you better have some assets. That's the only way you get to that retirement thing. See, retirement means I don't work. I don't actively do anything and I got money coming in. I get to go play golf. I get to go play pickleball. I get to walk my dog. I get to garden. I get to travel. I go to the church. I volunteer my time over here. I play with my grandkids whatever. And guess what? The lifestyle's paid for by the assets or some type of other retirement vehicle that you put time into and it gives you income. That's real control. That's real control of your time. That's real control of your choices. And that's real control of your freedom. That's what it is, guys. Thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate that, man. I appreciate you for the super chat. Thank you. So all I'm telling you guys is make sure, make sure you sit down and you take yourself through this exercise. Don't be intimidated by it. Remember my story. I started putting in $150 every two weeks, guys. Fast forward, I'm doing okay. I started with $150 every two weeks into my company-sponsored 401k. Now, for you guys that don't have 401ks or don't have access to them, guess what? Don't Ain't a problem. All you got to do is open up your Roth IRA. Ro open up a traditional IRA. Those are retirement vehicles. And you get some tax benefits associated with those retirement vehicles. You can also open up a taxable brokerage account. Like I talked about earlier in, in this video, Moomoo, you can open up a taxable brokerage account using Moomoo, get yourself up to 15 free stocks, and then start buying your paper assets. You can do that. That link is down in the description box if you want to try out Moomoo. But at the end of the day, it's about you and it's about what you want to get accomplished. If you want to make $100,000 in retirement while you're on the beach with your toes in the sand, looking at that beautiful blue water and getting all that vitamin D from the sun and you're getting 100K a year, you can do that. You can do that. Just got to plan for it. You don't need but 1.6 million in your retirement fund, in your, in, your, in your pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. You got 1.6 million at a 6% rate of return. That's $100,000 a year and you can kick back and just travel the world. That's doable, guys. That's doable, right? You just have to make up in your mind, you want to do it because it takes commitment. It takes discipline. It takes consistency. It takes patience. A lot of people don't have those three things or those four things. They really don't. But I know I'm talking to people here that want to get to freedom. And if you really want to get to freedom, you can First thing you got to do is determine what freedom is. A lot of us haven't done that. Let's be honest. A lot of us haven't really sat down and had an honest conversation with ourselves and asked ourselves, what does freedom really look like for me? Don't include things now. Think about freedom without things. What else in your life is, that you, is important to you excluding things? Right. Because we know things are not going to make us happy, guys. We know money is not going to make us happy. So we got to start having a hard conversation with ourselves and really understanding what really does make us happy. What can we do in this life that we believe will bring us purpose and passion? Once you determine that, then you got to say to yourself, OK, in order for me to go chase 
my purpose and passion, how much money do I need to have coming in on a monthly basis? I don't know. For me, it was 10K, it was 10K a month. I needed 10K a month coming in. And then I could go chase my purpose and my passion. Then I said at 26, okay, 10K a month, ooh, that's a lot of money. How much do I need in assets in order to generate that 10K? Rule of 200 says take the 10,000 times it by 200, that's 2 million. So I said, ooh, that's a lot of money. At 26, I was dead broke. So I go from zero, dead broke, to 2 million in assets. Ooh, that's a lot of money. How do I do that? How do I do that? Well, you do that by starting. Taking $150 every two weeks and trust the process. Every time you get a raise, you raise what you put in your retirement. Every two years, you buy a piece of real estate. Put a tenant in it. Put the blinders on. Don't buy nothing extravagant. Live a decent life, but don't be extravagant. And just put every dime you can into assets. And over the next 24 years, poof, you got it. You're there. You can walk away. That's all I did, guys. That's all I did. Yeah, I had discipline. I had consistency and I had patience. It took those three things, but I did it. And guess what? I wasn't no smarter than you. I just learned as I went along. I listened. See, I tell you guys, you got to listen twice as much as you talk. You got to listen twice as much as you talk. See, a lot of us talk twice as much as we listen. That way we don't learn nothing. We don't learn nothing. Also, when you get yourself around people who are successful, who are where you want to be, you shouldn't be doing any talking. You should be listening. Very little talking and just listening. That's what you should be doing. So all I'm telling you is if you want to get where you want to get, get there. Don't let negative Nancys get in your way because you're going to encounter people, guys, who don't want to see you successful, right? They have made decisions in their life that they're not going to be successful. They don't want you to be successful either. You got to safeguard yourself from those types of people. I'm not just talking about people you know that you physically know. I'm just talking about people online, right? Keep yourself away from people online, man, who are not headed in the direction you're headed. Birds of a feather flock together, right? If I'm hanging around five broke people, I'm, I'm the six. I just don't know it. But if I'm, if I'm hanging around five people who are where I want to be from a wealth standpoint, then guess what? I'm number six. I just keep, I just keep listening. Keep taking in knowledge. Keep acting on that knowledge. And before you know it, I'm number six. It's who you hang around, guys. It's who you listen to. A lot of y'all rock with me every day. And I understand why a lot of y'all rock with me every day because it's what you hear and what you act on. If y'all been watching me for four years, I've been pretty consistent in my delivery for four years. Pretty consistent. I haven't done anything out of the ordinary. People that have been watching me for four years can vouch for that. And that's on purpose. It's on purpose. People learn from repetition, guys. So if you want to learn something, you're going to have to practice it over and over and over and over and over until it becomes second nature. That's why investing is about repetition. That's why I talk about dollar, dollar cost averaging. It's about repetition. I don't care if I got 100 bucks. Guess what? I only had 150. But I knew if I could change my attitude with money at $150 every two weeks, then when I'm able to put in $2,500 every two weeks, my mindset going to be right. I'll understand it. So you got to start. And it's about repetition, right? You got to open that brokerage account and you got to dedicate a certain amount of money to that brokerage account every single month, come hell or high water. You got to do it because it's about repetition. See, when we get good at something, it's because of practice. It's because of repetition. When I was playing football from seven years old to 26 years old, I wasn't the best athlete on the field, guys. I wasn't the fastest. I wasn't the strongest. I didn't jump the highest. 
The reason I was so good at the collegiate level in my three little short years in the NFL is because what? I practiced. It was repetition. I studied the small things. I know who my opponent was. I know what their strengths and their weaknesses were. So it helped me put myself in a position to be successful on that field. I took those skill sets and I just transitioned it to my personal life and my financial life. And that's all I did. Never was the smartest banker. Never was the, the, the best performing banker. I was just one of those guys that worked my butt off and I paid attention to the small details. When my client asked me something, boom, I was right there. When they needed something, I was right there. When they made a phone call to me, I returned their call before I left that office. It was just the little things. Same with investing. I got $100 a day. I'm going to put that $100 in and trust the process. I get a little raise. I get a side hustle. Guess what? I'm going to go from that 100 to 200. I'm going to just trust the process. Yeah, it don't look like it's growing. It looks like it's moving at a snail's pace because that's just the way the compounding effect in the stock market works when you just got a small amount of money you're putting in. But then all of a sudden you start elevating that money. You start working these side hustles. You start paying off debt. Now you're freeing up more money that you can put in and multiply it. All of a sudden, you hear year, year two, and you're putting $500 a month in. Now you start seeing this thing start growing. Now you start seeing that compounding effect of the stock market where you're reinvesting those dividends. And now you're getting that appreciation from companies that are appreciated. So the money you got in these companies is appreciating right along with the companies. That's when it starts to take hold, guys. For three straight years, from 26 to 29, I didn't understand nothing about the stock market. All I knew is, is I'm going to put this money in and I'm going to trust the process. And then after about three years, I started looking at my statement. I'm like, whoa, here's what I put in, but here's what the portfolio is worth. I was like, whoa, I got to put more in because if it did that with that amount of money, what if I put double what I put in last year? Ooh, that thing going to start growing. And that's what happened. It started growing. Right. So all I'm telling you is, is you got to figure out over here what the end result is. Right. What do you want your retirement income to be? Right. You need to know what retirement age you want to quote unquote retire. Like I said, age is just a number. You can retire whenever you want to. And retirement simply means I control 100 percent of my time. I control my own financial power and I control my own financial destiny. That's all retirement means. You can retire at any age. There is no, oh, I got to wait till I'm 67. No, you don't. I didn't wait. I'm not 67. I'm, I'm 50. I control my own financial destiny. I control all of my time. And I control my financial power. Right? And I have done that for five years. I've done that. And I did it because I, I made a decision that I'm going to get myself to financial freedom. I'm not going to let anybody stand in my way. Anybody that gets in my way who is negative, I'm going to remove myself from them. And I'll love them from a distance. I just have to love them from a distance. I can't be around people who ain't thinking like me. Not going to do it. Because I know that's precious time that I'm wasting when I'm hanging around people who have no intention of getting the financial freedom. They have no intent. All they want to talk about is negative stuff. Nothing positive. And I've already told y'all guys, the filter system, whatever you let in, that's what comes out. So if you're letting a lot of negativity into your filter system, that's what's going to come out. Whatever you let in is what's coming out. So if you're letting a lot of negative in, then a lot of negative is going to come out. If you're letting a lot of positive in, a lot of positive is going to come out. And all that negative, guys, it just affects our health. It does. It affects our health. It affects our mood. It affects our attitude. It does. So we got to stop focusing so much on this negative stuff. All this social media stuff around all this negative. Stop focusing on that, guys. Get you some new things to focus on that have some positive nature to them. Right? Start surrounding yourself with people that are positive. People that are, are optimistic about life, not pessimistic about life. You, 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 all this stuff will help you as you run hard to try to get to this financial freedom. It'll make you a better person. I 
do not hang around anybody that's negative. I don't. I don't hang around anybody that's negative. If anybody try to bring any negative to me, I'm going to remove myself pretty quickly from around them. I don't need that in my life. I need positive in my life. See, positive breeds positive. Negative breeds negative. That's just the way it is, guys. So if you're running hard and you want to get to this financial freedom thing and you want to be able to have a good, solid, passive income coming in when you get there, you got to get these assets up. That's why I'm telling you guys 2024 is a wealth transfer year. That's where it starts, 2024. You should make a commitment to yourself and to your family over these next 10 years. One 10-year block, guys. I don't care what age you are. I don't care if you're 18. I don't care if you're 68. Give yourself a 10-year block. Commit to a certain dollar amount that you're going to put in paper assets for the next 10 years. Every month, rain or shine, for 10 years. Make that commitment. If you make that commitment, I think at the end of that 10 years, you'll be happy. Because there's not been a 10-year period of time in the stock market where it's traded at a negative. A 10-year block. Never. Now, one year, yes. Two years, yes. But never a 10-year block. Never a 10-year block. So that's why I keep telling people 10 years. Now, you can go as long as you want. You can go one year, 10 years, 100 years. That's up to you. All I'm telling you is, based on my experience, if you give yourself, you know, three, five, ten years, you really give yourself a chance to really compound and multiply that money. The longer you give it, I think the more it multiplies. I'm going to give mine ten years. So I'm 55 now. I'm going to give it to, I'm going to give, I got ten more hard years to run in the stock market. Ten more hard years. Once I get to 65, I'm done. I'm going to start pulling my money out of the stock market. I'm going to start putting it in safety. Because at that point, I'm about five years from the golden years. Because I told you at 70, I just want to kick back on an island somewhere with my toes in the sand, looking at the beautiful blue water on some Caribbean island, a little small Caribbean island with me a little sliver of land, me a little small little something on it. And every morning, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to walk out the back of my small little something with me a cup of coffee, sit on my, my, my chair and look at that ocean. That's going to be retirement for me. I got 10 years. So for these next 10 years, every dime that I get, I'm going to be looking to invest it in these three paper assets I've been talking about on my live streams and I've been talking about in every video. That's it. Those are the three. Next 10 years, I'm going to run hard because I think from 24 to 34, there's a lot of wealth going to be made, guys. I'm going to be a part of that. I don't know about you. I'm going to be a part of that. I'm going to be a part of that 10-year block of time where whew, more wealth is going to be made over this next 10 years, guys, than has been made over the last 40 years. In these next 10 years, do you know what's happening out here in the world? Do you, do you see the innovation that's happening? Do you see what's happening to companies? It's getting ready to explode, guys. But you got to be invested. You got to be invested. You got to trust the process. Is there a risk associated with it? Yes, there is some risk. But I always like this saying. Without risk, there's no reward, man. Right? The rewards go to the brave. Not the weak. The reward goes to the brave, not the weak. You got to figure out where you're at on that spectrum, man. You got to figure out where you're at on that spectrum. Right? Am I sitting around here trying to soak up all this knowledge and never do anything with it? No. Back to this lady I told you that only made $50,000 a year, guys. That was the most she ever made. She died with a $7 million net worth. She didn't have a lot of knowledge. She just had a lot of action. She just trusted the process. She just took her earnings and invested it over a long period of time. And it just kept compounding. Never made more than $50,000 a year. Ended up with a $7 million net worth. How? Discipline. 
consistency, patience. See, we complain about, oh, I don't make enough money. Yeah, you do. You just spend it all on stuff that you shouldn't be spending it on. It ain't how much you make, it's how much you keep. And you multiply. That's all. It ain't how much you make, it's how much you keep. And it's how much you multiply. The question is, are you willing to keep it and multiply it? I don't know. You got to answer that question. I can't answer it for you. You got to answer it. But I'm going to be on here every day. And I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to be talking just like I'm talking now every single day. I'd love for you to join me. But I get it. Some people can't handle the truth. You ever seen that movie? What, what was that name of that movie where, where um, uh, Jack, Jack, uh, Jack Nicholson said, you can't handle the truth. I love that movie. I can't. What? No, it wasn't Top Flight, was it? It wasn't Top Gun, was it? Ah, it was one of the movies Tom Cruise was in. And, 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 and Jack Nicholson was in it. And Jack Nicholson was like the general. And, and Tom Cruise was, I don't know if he was a lawyer or he was something, but it was about the military. A few good men, that's it. That's it. Somebody in the chat hit me. That's it, a few good men. Man, I love that movie. I love that movie. And I love that part where Jack Nicholson had that, when he was on the stand, and, and, they, and, and Tom Cruise was, was killing him. I mean, Tom Cruise was like the prosecutor. Not the prosecutor. Maybe he was a prosecutor. I don't know what he was, but he was a lawyer. And he was cross-examining Jack Nicholson. And Jack Nicholson, man, what? One of the best performances I've ever seen in a movie. But one of the things he said in there, you can't handle the truth. Some of us can't handle the truth. We want to live in a make-believe world. We want to live in a world where we think everything's going to be all right. I ain't got to do nothing. It'll just work itself out. And that's a make-believe world, guys. The real world don't work that way. When you get to retirement, whatever age that is, if you ain't got some assets, and the only thing you got is that Social Security check, that's not going to be good. That's not going to allow you to chase your passions and your purpose. That $2,500 a month you give them from Social Security, if you get that much, it's not going to be enough, guys. So you better start planning now, taking your income now, get into this wealth transfer blueprint that I've been talking about, open your brokerage account, start putting you some money in it, and start buying these paper assets. Again, not your financial advisor, just a guy here on YouTube that's trying to give y'all what I did and what I'm doing. See, I consider myself a teacher, a financial teacher, right? I, I, I consider myself an information giver, right? That's what I do. That's what I enjoy doing. This is my passion. This is my purpose. This is what I was put here to do. I wasn't put here to be a banker. I wasn't put here to be an NFL football player. I was put here to be a teacher of, 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 of finances, right? Not a PhD, not some, uh, got no letters behind my name. All I got behind my name is experience. No, no letters, no degrees, just experience. Just experience, 25 years of doing exactly what I'm telling you you should be doing. That's all I got. Now, if that's enough for you, keep rocking with me. Keep rocking with me. We're going to keep, keep talking about, we're going to keep talking about getting to this wealth. But you got to follow me. You got you to watch and you got to act. Most importantly, you got to act, right? You got to trust the process. Hey, Richard, hey, man, I don't fully understand all the ins and outs of this stock market thing, but you know something, them concepts you talk about, I'm starting to get it. I don't know where everything I need to know, but I'm going to trust the process. I'm going to rock with you and trust the process. That's the motto, guys. Just trust the process. Let's not ask a whole bunch of questions. Let's trust the process. Now, I'm not saying you blindly put your money into something that you don't know nothing what you're doing. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm just telling you to trust the process. Start with a small amount of money and start trusting the process. 
What's your alternative? Either you can trust the process and get started or what's your alternative? You're going to get to my age and you're going to have nothing. You're not going to be able to stop working. That's, the, that's your alternative. You can either trust the process now and start get, get, putting your money in something to multiply it or do nothing. And you know what your situation is going to look like when you get to my age or older. It's not going to be very good. Quiet is kept, guys. $50,000 a year. What the average retiree makes is not a lot of money, guys. Especially when you get up in age. That's not a lot of money. That's not a lot of money. $50,000 a year for a retiree is not a lot of money. It's not. Now, if that's what you want, that's okay. Go ahead. I didn't want that. I needed more than that. So I just trust the process. Ooh, 150 every two weeks. Oh, 350. Oh, 500. Oh, 1,000. Every time I leveled up, I leveled up, right? How did I go from making $30,000 a year to making almost $200,000 a year in banking? How did I do that? I did it by what? Trusting the process. Believing in myself. Y'all don't want to pay me? I'm going to take my expertise to the open market and I'm going to see if somebody else will pay me. You got to trust yourself. You got to bet on you. That's what I did. When I left banking, that was what I was making. Walked away from it, though, because I had prepared. I had prepared. I had prepared. And then guess what? Opened my own business. Things exploded. Why? Because I started helping people. I started doing what I was called to do. See, the thing is, is if you help them, enough people get what they want, you get what you want. That's, the, that's it, guys. So the key is, we got to figure out what our end result is, and then we got to put a plan together to get us there. If I want to make $100,000 a year in retirement, whatever age that is, if I want hundred k a year in retirement, I need a $1.6 million net worth. And on that $1.6 million, I'm going to get a 6% rate of return, pre-tax, and that's going to give me $100,000 a year. Now the key is whatever age I am to whatever age I need to be when I quote unquote retire, I got to take every penny I get and invest it in something to get me to the 1.6 million. Because if I can get the 1.6 million, I'm going to make $100,000 a year. And then I get to just do whatever I want to do for the rest of my life. But I got to give up something in the short term to have everything I want in the long term. I got to do that. If I'm willing to do that, phew, sky's the limit. I can do whatever I want to do in this life and not have to worry about how I'm going to pay for it. Everybody is going to have something different that's important to them, guys. We're all going to have something that's different, right? I wanted a house like this where I had a big old open backyard, the pool, the, 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 the garage, the cars, that was part of the lifestyle I wanted. It ain't the most important, the most important part of my lifestyle, but it was something that I wanted. Nobody gave it to me. I had to do what? Trust the process and just keep repeating, rinse and repeat every year until I got my assets to a point where I could do this. That's it. I get to control my time. I get to control my choices. I get to control my freedom. You can do that too, but you got to set the stage. You got to make the choice. You got to get your filter system right. A lot of us, our filter system just ain't right. We still got that old thinking. We got to introduce some new thinking. That's why a lot of times in these videos, I talk about the financial stuff, but I also talk about the mindset. Because, see, I can have all the financial knowledge in the world, but if I got the wrong mindset, it means nothing. Right? Same story when I told y'all about this lady who made $50,000 a year and, and, and had a $7 million net worth. The same year this lady died, there was another gentleman in this story that I read that they, can, they, they, they compared these two people. 
And, and the whole story was one person had all the knowledge and then one person had all the take action, right? The, the guy that had all the knowledge was a Wall Street banker. All the knowledge, he's a Wall Street banker, made millions and millions and millions and millions upon millions of dollars every year. Same year this lady died, who was making the 50K, who had the 7 million net worth, same year she died, this guy files personal bankruptcy. The Wall Street banker who was making millions and millions of dollars a year. What's the difference? What's the difference? What's the difference? That's the difference. Right? This lady over here had the right behavior with money. This gentleman over here had the wrong behavior with money, but he had all the knowledge. He just didn't use it properly. She had very little knowledge, but she had a whole lot of take action. She had a whole lot of follow the process. She had a whole lot of trust the process. Right. So all I'm telling you is you, you, you got to get this right. Right. And part of getting this right is trusting the process. So when I'm saying, hey, guys, you need to open up a brokerage account. Hey, you need to put some money in that brokerage account. Hey, you need to think about what investments you want to buy. And then, hey, you need to be patient. That is following and trusting the process. That's what it is. I'm just giving you experience here. Ultimately, it's up to you. If you, if you want to do nothing, don't do nothing. But here's what I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to leave you guys with this, and I'm going to get out of here. Whatever results you got in 2023, in every area of your life, whatever results you got, right? If you want those same results in 2024, just do what you did last year. That's all. If you want the same results you got in 2023, you want those same results in 2024, do the same activities you did last year. I guarantee you'll get the same results. But here's the thing I want you to also think about. If you didn't get the results that you wanted last year, what do you need to do in 2024 to get different results? You got to change your activities. Right. You got to change your activities, guys. It's that simple. So if I didn't get the results I wanted in 23, I can't expect different results in 24 unless I change the activities. I can't do the same activities that I did in 23. So if I didn't invest and I just procrastinated, um, just didn't do anything to get anywhere closer to my financial freedom, then if I do those same things in 24, I'm not going to get any closer in 24 to my financial freedom. Got to change up the activities. Even I changed up the activities for myself. There are things that I want to do in 24 that I didn't get done in 23. So I had to change up some activities in my life so I could get the results I need in 24. I had to change up some activities. And that's all I'm telling you. You got to change up some activities. Right? Between the two ears. Right? Whatever you let in, that's what comes out. So if I'm listening to positive information, I, 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 I'm listening to people who give me positive information about building wealth. They're not trying to three-card Monty me and get me in a funnel and then try to sell me on some... Uh, uh, I don't, I don't need those people. I need to have people genuinely that have experience and who are really trying to help me, not beat me out of all my money. Right? So, so follow those people. Take information from those people. And then act on that information. That's the key. Action. You got to take action. It's not good enough just to receive the information, guys. It's not good enough. Information is no good unless it's acted upon. What good is it? 
What good has you read three books about the stock market if you ain't never bought a never bought an ETF? That was a waste of time. Why am I reading all these books, but I ain't doing no action? What's good if you're watching my videos every day, but you ain't got a brokerage account? You ain't starting to buy paper assets. You ain't starting to build your wealth. What, what you watching for? You shouldn't even watch. The key is action, guys. Activities and action. Activities and action. So if you want to get to your pot of gold at the end of the rainbow and have the retirement and the lifestyle you want when you get to the golden years, activities, action. Activities, action. Okay, I'm activities and action, activities and action, but it ain't working. Change up the activities, action. Change the activities, action, until you find activities that work. Ain't nobody going to feel sorry for you because you did something and it didn't work and now all of a sudden you don't want to do nothing else. Nobody going to feel sorry for you. You got to say, okay, I tried that activity. It didn't work. Let me try a different one. Action. That's what you got to do. Okay, I fell down and bumped my head. I'm going to get back up, dust it off, going back at them again. Because I know on the other side of failure is success. Just over that wall, here's a wall. Failure on one side, success on the other. That's how it works. So guess what? I keep trying to climb over that wall. I keep falling. I keep trying. I keep falling. Guess what, though? After repetition, at one day, I'm going to get over that wall. And when I get over that wall, boom, there I go. I'm off to the races. That's how it is, guys. With anything in your life, it's repetition. It's activities. It's action. It's getting up dusting myself off, learning from my mistakes, and moving forward. See, I don't live my life in the rearview mirror. I live my life straight ahead. Mm -mm. Ain't no need to looking back. I learn from those mistakes, but I don't need to look back on them. I don't need to re keep reminiscing on them. No. All I'm thinking about is the present and the future. Learn from that. Take the present. Head towards the future. But it's all up here, right? You got to get this right in order for you to be able to do that. You've got to get the filter system right. And it starts with you. Good things in, good things out. Good things in, good things out. So anything in your life that is not good things in, cut it off. Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok, YouTube, negative Nancys, gossipers at work. Family members that get on your nerves, all that, cut it out. Cut it out. Introduce some new stuff into your life. Some good stuff. Positive stuff. Right? Change your filter system. It's going to help you build wealth. Negative filter system, hard to build wealth. And if you do build it, you'll be miserable. Because you're going to have nobody to enjoy it with. You're going to have nobody around you. I just had a conversation with two of my daughters today. I got four daughters. I had a conversation with two of them. They're going to be going into business with me and we're going to be doing some things. I think I mentioned that a little bit late last year that we were collaborating, getting ready to do some stuff. That's what I'm talking about. See, see, the way I look at it is, is, you know, Richard, you can, you can, you can build this empire uh, all by yourself. Or you can bring some people with you. Who better to bring with me than my daughters? That's, that's it. See, that's what it's all about for me. It, it's, it's getting to a point in my life where I can say, kids, this is what daddy's done. Y'all want to take that thing to the next level? I need y'all to help me. And guess what? They're going to help me. We're going to take this thing to the next level. All I'm telling you guys is financial freedom allows you to do whatever you want to do. Financial freedom. Whatever that means to you. It allows you to do anything you want to do. So if you want that in your life, trust the process. Get started. Activities. Action. Positive in, positive out. That's it. Do that 
and you'll win. You will win. And when you get to whatever the golden years are, or whenever you feel like I'm done, you'll have assets over here that are generated income that will take care of you. And then those assets, you're going to pass on to somebody else, whether it be your family, whether it be a charitable organization, whoever you choose to pass it on to, that's who you're going to pass it on to. Because we're going to live on the interest, not the principal, when we get to the golden years. We'll talk more about that in, 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 in videos coming. But well, we're going to just live on that interest. We're never going to touch the principal. And that's how we're going to pass on that wealth. That's how we're going to create that generational wealth if we want to create that for our family, for our children. And we're going to teach our children. See, a method to my madness is I got adult daughters and they're good kids. But there's a method to my madness. What I know, I want to pass on to them. I want them to understand this. So guess what? They can pass it on to their kids. And then their kids pass it on to their kids. That's generational wealth. We teach one, and then one teaches one, and then one teaches one. And before you know it, you've got a whole line of family that understands wealth and how to make wealth, how to keep wealth. But it starts with you. It starts with you. So if you're going to rock with me, rock with me. I appreciate y'all hanging in there tonight. I know I went a little bit long-winded tonight, but I appreciate you rocking with me. If you like the content, guys, lock it in with a thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up button for me. That lets me know you guys appreciate the content. I'm on the right page. I'm talking about the right stuff. So lock it in with a thumbs up if you appreciate the content. Um, also, if you want them, 15 free stocks from Moomoo. Guys, click on that link down in the description box. Moomoo is going to give you up to 15 free stocks when you fund your brokerage account. That is the brokerage account that I will be buying my paper assets in 2024 with. That's what I'm rocking with. If you want to rock with me, you want to try out Moomoo, hit that link down below, put some money in the account, get ready to do what? Trust the process. Get ready to do what? Create some activities. Get ready to do what? Take action. Build wealth. 2024 is a wealth transfer year, and we're going to be transferring this wealth for the next 10 years, right? We're going to be transferring it for the next 10 years, but it starts now. It starts right now. So if you're rocking with me, lock it in with a thumbs up. Thoughts become things. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness. Never stop believing in yourself. Stay healthy. Get wealthy. And I'm going to catch you guys on the next video. Peace.